On this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a military decision making tool called the OODA loop to be massively successful in business. What's going on? My name is Bill Allen. I'm a military pilot turned full-time real estate investor. I flipped over 850 houses in the past few years, and I wanna show you guys how to do the exact same thing. On today's video, this is a military strategy that I've used for a very long time. I'm in my 20th year in the Navy right now, about to retire, and something called the OODA loop came into my life as I was flying helicopters. So I learned how to fly helicopters, and one of my instructors brought this in and started teaching it to me. And understanding why I was making the decisions that I would make why I was as successful as I was flying helicopters and airplanes um, in the military and why I uh, myself and a lot of military pilots not just me we had the ability to make decisions really quickly and um, it's something I've talked about for a very long time uh, there's something called hypothesize test and pivot I have this written all over my walls everywhere my whiteboards um, in my notebooks everything like that and inside of that the OODA loop kind of builds that in so Let's talk about what it is. The OODA loop is a military methodology for decision making. It is something that is kind of ingrained in soldiers when they come in, pilots, people that are on submarines, ships, uh, Marines, Navy SEALs, everybody. And Sun Tzu said this, it was a quote that he said called, victorious warriors win first and then they go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first, then seek to win. So. It's about planning and preparation first. A lot of what I've talked about in the past comes from planning and preparation prior to action, right? Action is very important, but planning and preparation is, is really important too. Not overly planning or just spending a ton of time in the educational phase, but getting a plan together and, and prioritizing and putting things together before you act. So the, um, the OODA loop is observe, orient, decide, and act. O-O-D-A, observe, orient, decide and act. So let's talk about the observation first. This is strictly raw data. So when I'm observing things, it was funny, I was in the gym this morning and my personal trainer said to me, he goes, you don't talk very much. Um, you just kind of like look around. You're constantly moving, your eyes are moving, you're taking in information all the time. What's going on with that? And I basically said to him this exact thing. Well, I just observe, I wanna observe things. I wanna know where the exits are. I wanna know how many people are in here. I wanna know what they're doing. I wanna know who's who. I wanna, I'm just taking in information all the time. This is just raw data. I'm not prioritizing anything. I'm not actually crunching or analyzing any of the data. I'm just taking in information. So in the beginning of anything, I'm just listening. I'm listening to every single person that's in a meeting. I'm taking in all the data and information, and then, and then I'm going to start crunching it, right? And so we do this, um, we, we do this like uh, on our own. We just naturally do this. You naturally are taking in information. Now, the people that are really, really successful in utilizing this, they're taking in information that's, that's necessary and getting rid of the garbage. There's so much garbage out there in the world right now, especially in real estate education. There's a ton of people just talking and talking and talking. You gotta figure out, okay, what do I need and what don't I need? And don't waste time on the stuff you don't need and then collect and aggregate the things that you do need. So this is the observation phase, step one. And now these are small loops. The interesting thing is all these are interconnected inside the OODA loop, but they're also small loops. So you're gonna go around a few times in this observe phase to get some information in, and then you're gonna move to orient. Now when you're orienting, you're basically taking this information and starting to crunch it. You're prioritizing and analyzing the data. It's like a computer, takes in zeros and ones and then aggregates it and it starts analyzing and crunching the data and making decisions, right? So we're gonna take this and we're gonna start orienting ourselves around the information that we observed. So we're gonna filter this, we're gonna start analyzing it, and then we're gonna start enriching this data and starting to crunch it. This right here is where raw statistics are turned into insights. You're actually thinking about the information that's come in, you're starting to crunch it, and you're starting to determine the direction that you might wanna go. So you are analyzing, evaluating, and prioritizing this data such that you can make a decision. So now we're oriented, we've crunched the data, and we have this um, something, this outcome, right? And that's where my previous um, three steps came in. Hypothesize, test, and pivot. So now we're gonna create a hypothesis. We're gonna say if then statements, right? If we do this, then this should happen. So now we have a hypothesis of what we think is gonna happen, and now we can decide. Decide the direction that we're gonna go, decide the, um, the actions that we might start taking to, to get a projected outcome, and we're gonna make a decision. So in all of this, many options are gonna be created, and you're gonna have lots of different 
uh, opportunities or things that you're going to decide on doing. And from those, you're going to pick the one that you think has the best opportunity of a positive outcome for you to get to the goal that you're trying to achieve. So we observed all this information, we oriented ourselves, and we started to crunch the data, started to make a hypothesis. And then inside of this decide, we've hypothesized, and now we know the direction that we want to go, and we have decided where to go. The next step is act. So this is the test piece, right? Hypothesize, test, and pivot. Now in the action, we're gonna go test. So we're gonna take action on the hypothesis and the decision that we made. We're gonna go out there and we're gonna execute our plan. We're gonna act on it, right? And this is the thing you hear people say all the time. Just take more action, take more action, take more action. Well, uh, if you take action without actually like a plan or a hypothesis or what you think is gonna happen, you have no feedback loop. And this is where almost everybody fails. They just go out there and they act, blindly act, without an expectation of what the results should be, and they have no feedback loop to say, oh, this didn't happen as planned. I hypothesized, I test, and now the loop happens, right? We pivot. And the purpose of this OODA loop, the magical piece of this whole thing, is that it goes around in a circle. You take, you observe again, okay? So you take in more information based on what you think is gonna happen. So you have a projected outcome that you think was gonna happen, you take in that information you observe, you orient, you start crunching the data. Um, it's, oh my gosh, it's working like crazy. This is great, it's really working. Keep doing that, right? Or this isn't working as well as I thought. I need to make some adjustments. And then you can decide on the adjustments that make. You make a new hypothesis, you test it, you take action, and then you pivot again. And it repeats over and over and over again. And the purpose of this loop is to reduce this, this time that it takes to make decisions and start making better ones. So the power of the OODA loop, the really successful business owners, entrepreneurs, military members, everybody that use this cycle, whether they know they're using it or not, the power of it is to reduce the time that it takes to decide and act. So we can observe, we can orient, we can decide, and we can act, and it starts going faster and faster and faster like a flywheel over time that doesn't take a lot of energy. So the hypothesis just changes a little bit. I've used this analogy a lot of times. When I was flying helicopters, you take in information quickly, you make a decision, you act on it, and then you take in new information. This is the OODA loop in practice. Same thing happens in your business. The people who are successful can make decisions quicker, and over time, it speeds up and up and up. The people who have trouble in business, or their business is struggling, it's usually what's happening is they're bottlenecking in the decision-making process. It's a long, drawn-out process that they have to take over and over with lots of people that, that are involved, um, and they don't make decisions quick enough, and they, they, by the time they make the decision, they've missed it. They've missed the opportunity, they missed the window, and people are moving so much faster than them because they're, they're making these decisions quickly. So it's really important in business. All right, now that you know this methodology on the OODA loop, you're ready to implement it into your business, into your life, and you can observe, orient, decide, and act faster. You can make your decisions quicker and know why, hypothesize, test, and pivot, it's time to move on to the next step. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to click the link in the description and see how you can flip a house with no money. You got the business skills, now go out and execute on it without having any of your own money.